Well, it's been good to be in the Lord's house this morning. I trust you've enjoyed Sunday school. Amen. Don't forget Wednesday night, if you're able to be here, we'll be preaching through the Proverbs. And then next Sunday, I'll be gone. I'll be starting revival next Sunday morning, Lord willing, in middle Georgia. And then uh, that Wednesday night, Brother Cagney will be here. And so uh, if you'll mark that off and uh, make sure you're in your place, support your church. Amen. Ask God to bless. All right, if you have a copy of the, uh, the Bible, Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, we've been on uh, the seven the last sayings of the cross, and we want to continue there this morning. Don't forget, right after service, I think they've got a, something out there for a meal. You've got to eat somewhere, so uh, we'd love for you to stay and eat and uh, uh, enjoy a little bit of fellowship. Amen? All right, Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people that, uh, and the people that stood beholding, and the rulers also with them, derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Watch this. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? We indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I want to preach to you this morning on the thought Confiding faith, confiding faith. Father, thank you so much for the faith that I've placed in the Lord Jesus. Thank you for, uh, Lord, faith that changes an individual. I pray now as we look into the Bible, you'd speak to our hearts. If there be one, whether it's in this room or online, under my voice, Lord, that's never, ever experienced confiding faith. I pray today would be that day. Lord, thank you for placing thy hand upon our nation. Help our nation. Help our country, our churches, our communities. Father, just uh, be with our church today. These that are away from us, I pray for them. And just for these few moments that we have in the word of God, Help us, remind us, it's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even and dividing asunder a soul and joints of the morrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. I pray you'd use the Bible this day, in Jesus' name, amen. As we've been looking at this, uh, the Lord's on the cross. Uh, we've been preaching on two different men. Both of them are lost men. Both of them deserve to die both of them are uh, experiencing punishment for sin. Sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Now look, uh, even if it is a uh, deathbed salvation, uh, somebody said, well, what if, the, what if the thief wouldn't have died and he'd have got saved? Would he have still been penalized? Well, I know of men that get saved in the prison and uh, they remain in prison for a while. God saved their soul, but it doesn't uh, take away the responsibility, the consequences that their sin that they've done as far as a sentence or so forth. But thanks be unto God, the sentence of death, spiritual death, 
is removed from a man, woman, boy, or girl when he or she gets saved. Amen? Uh, we know that if we have put our faith and trust in Him, uh, we're going to, if we die and when we die, uh, we could. You say, what do you mean if we're going to die? Well, you don't know that. The rapture could take place. Uh, Jesus said, uh, he's coming back one day. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. And those which remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. John said, I heard a voice say, come up hither. Uh, Revelation chapter 5. I mean, the scriptures are clear about the rapture of the church. It'd be all right with me if he'd just come on now. Only thing that would bother me is uh, those that are in my family that are lost. I pray for every morning. That they're not lost, they're not saved. They're like this other thief on the cross. They've never experienced confiding faith. Now, the ones in my family uh, that uh, I'm referring to, they have what I want to refer to as a head knowledge of Christ, but no heart knowledge. It's possible for a man, woman, boy, or girl to have a head knowledge and no heart knowledge. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Because we got multitudes of people that know a lot about God. They know about God, but they do not know the God of heaven. And it's one thing to know about God and a total different ball game to know God. Amen. And uh, here's a prime example of confiding faith. There's two men on the cross. Now look, both of them have been arrested for crimes. Both of them are in the same condition both of them are going underneath the same consequences, the punishment of God. And there's a drastic change in one, and there's no change in the other. Why does that happen? Why does it take place? Well, first of all, uh, there's a multitude of people out here that have what I want to call head knowledge. They have uh, the knowledge of God. They would believe, if you ask them, do they believe in God? They would tell you yes. If you ask them, do they believe in Jesus? They would tell you yes. If you ask them, do you believe Jesus is God? They would tell you yes. If you ask them, do you believe the Bible? They would tell you yes. But may I say this? They've got a head knowledge. But they don't have any heart knowledge. So I want to talk about a few things here. One man said this, Saving faith is more than a correct opinion of a way of uh, responding to something. Just because you've got the right opinion doesn't mean that you're saved. There's a multitude of people out here, friend. I'm telling you uh, that... Uh, they're in both parties, they're all over the world, and they've got the right opinion. I mean, they believe in God, they have a head knowledge of God, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you that they agree and they believe that Jesus did come from heaven, that Jesus is God's Son. Well, that's a true statement. They've got a right opinion. They'll tell you that they not only believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, they'll tell you Jesus is a, uh, was born of a virgin. That's a true statement. That's a biblical statement. Isaiah 7 and 9 uh, proves those things. They've got that knowledge of the truth in their head. Their opinion is there was a man by the name of Jesus Christ who was 33 years old, who came to this world, who died for the sins of the world. They, will be, they, they believe that. They'll not argue against it. But that's just an opinion. That's just head knowledge. Both of these men had head knowledge. Matter of fact, one man said both of them had, a, had the opportunity to read the first gospel tract. What are you saying, preacher? Well, if you look above the cross of Christ above his head uh, they put a subscription king of kings and lord of lords this is the king of the Jews well back then if you were told you listened much in the, the preaching of John the Baptist and other men that preached the, the disciples uh, the, the king of the Jews was coming the Messiah was coming to deliver his people and so they had a lot of head knowledge. It was all in the land. Both of these men had head knowledge. Now look, 
Unfortunately, one died with head knowledge, and he went to a place where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. You can die and go to hell with head knowledge. Just because you say you believe the Bible doesn't mean you're ready for heaven, friend. Just because you say you believe in God doesn't mean you're ready for heaven. There's a major difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. Head knowledge has the opinion. Head knowledge agrees with what's going on. But that isn't all it takes. You say, why do you say that, preacher? Well, I want you to think about these two thieves. First of all, one of these men had a lot of head knowledge. He knew who Jesus was. And he was literally belittling the Lord. Now, believe it or not, I don't understand it all. Uh, only thing I can say is they just lost. They've never been saved. But there are men that believe in God. They believe in Jesus, but they mock Him with a lifestyle today. They mock Him with the way they live, with the way they talk, with the things they do. And there's no way that that individual is going to heaven. You can forget it. It's not going to happen. You, you don't go to heaven, friend, until you have a heart knowledge. There's a major difference. Head knowledge is one thing. A heart knowledge is a total different thing. We're going to talk about that this morning. But first of all, I want to expose this thing called head knowledge. There are people that literally believe with head knowledge that you can pray and God will hear you. May I refute that? If you've never been saved, the only prayer God will ever hear is the prayer, the cry out for salvation. You can pray all you want. It don't do you no good. You're not a child of God. The scripture said, Jesus said, you must marvel not. You must be born again. What does he mean? Does he mean to enter into the womb the second time? No. He's talking about being born of the spirit and of water. And what he's, the water represents the word of God. The Bible has to be sown in the heart of a man and in the head of a man before I ever get it. And I'll tell you this, most people will never get saved, listen, without head knowledge. Head knowledge is, is important. I'm not belittling it. How shall they hear except they have a preacher? They'll never hear the word of God. If they don't get head knowledge, they're never going to get heart knowledge. They've got to have a head knowledge. But you've got a lot of people that stops right there. Oh, I'll deal with it another time. I, 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 I'll get around to it. And, uh, well, you may. You might get around to it. You may not. But do you realize how many people in America, if Christ was to come today, would die and go to a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched? It's a place called hell. It's a real place. Matter of fact, if you've got any head knowledge of the Bible, you're aware Jesus preached more about hell than he did heaven. Christ exposed hell more than he did heaven. And there's a multitude of people that know about God. They know that Jesus came from heaven. They know that Mary's womb was filled with, with the fruit of, of the Holy Spirit, which the, the Christ child. They know that. They know that Christ not only was born of a virgin, but he lived for 33 years and he performed miracle after miracle. He walked on water anywhere. Hey, back in the old ancient uh, Egyptian times, they knew Jesus then. They knew about him. They go back to walls and caves where there's a picture of water and there's a picture of a man walking on the water. Where'd they get that? Jesus did that. They knew him. They know about him but they don't know him. You can ask some people. There's a crowd out here that will stand against the wicked evolution. It's, it's, it's a bunch of wickedness. I can destroy evolution with one move. You take time away from evolution and you don't have evolution. Some, now, some of us may look like we come from a monkey, but we didn't. God created us, amen? Amen. This crowd that would literally stand in our schools and teach our children that we come from a monkey. Totally, totally the Bible refutes it. It totally, it's contradictory. 
God created the heavens and the earth. God breathed the breath of life into man. Creation. It takes more faith to believe evolution than it does the Bible. And yet we got a lot of men. We got a lot of good men who have head knowledge, who would stand with me and say, I believe, preacher, I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I don't believe in evolution. I believe in creation. And they've got a lot of head knowledge. And that's, that's a good thing. I'm not knocking that. But you've got to have more than head knowledge. And I'm going to prove it this morning. Both of these men had head knowledge of Jesus. Both of them knew who he was. One dies without Christ, the other goes to heaven. You can have an opinion, and your opinion can be right. But here's the difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. If you get to weighing things in your, in your mind about these two men, the first thing the head would do is go to reasoning. Well, why does this man deserve to go to heaven? He's done nothing. He's a thief. He's a murderer. This man's a thief. He's been cursing Jesus. Why would Jesus hear his prayer? Why would Christ hear him? And the head, listen, the head does something the heart doesn't do. The head reasons. But the heart doesn't reason, friend. Now, what are you trying to say, preacher? Let's stick to the Bible. I'm trying to tell you, confiding faith comes from the heart. Now listen, don't misunderstand me. You have to have head knowledge. You have to have it. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, the scripture says. You've got to have head knowledge. But it doesn't stop there. Watch what happens. Here this man is on the cross, and there's a lot of reasoning going on in his mind. He looks over at the other one, and he says, hey, look, we deserve what we're getting. This man's done nothing amiss. We, you and I deserve to die and go to hell. We've, we've stolen and we've murdered and we've lived a wicked life. He's done nothing. And this man here the whole time, he's reasoning in his mind. And mankind today wants to reason in their mind why they won't die without Christ and go to hell. They want to read, they want to reason, they want to mentally figure everything out. Well, let me tell you something. Let me show you something. Here's a picture that God shows us that man can't argue with. First of all, salvation is by grace. This man can't do nothing with his hands. He can't work to, to, to get it. He can't go out here and turn over a new leaf and say, all right, I'm going to live right. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to chew. I'm not going to run with women that do and all those things. I'm just going to clean everything up and I'm going to get right. You can do that and die and go straight to hell. You can. You don't believe that there's people that are good moral people who do good, and, and that's a good thing, but they miss the whole thing. It ain't about doing good. If it was about me doing good, friend, I'd be, it'd be, I'd, I wouldn't have a chance. You wouldn't have a chance. Why do you say that? Listen to the scripture. There's none righteous, no, not one. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. God said that. God said none of us were righteous. We can try all we want. We can reason all we want in our mind and say, well, I came to church today. I've done good. I've quit this and I've quit that. Well, you're putting salvation on you. This man here looks over at this man. Now look, how did they get the head knowledge? You don't get saved without head knowledge, okay? Listen, it takes heart knowledge, but you don't get saved without head knowledge. I'm going to tell you how. God's grace begins in the mind, and God starts saturating the mind with what I want to call head knowledge. Both of these men had heard about Jesus, and now both of them read the first gospel tract. 
the subscription over his head, there's a plaque over his head, and it said, this is the king of the Jews. Well, they knew who the king of the Jews was. He was the Messiah. He was coming to rescue them, to save them. And they had little head knowledge. This one here looks over, and you know what he does? He reveals... A man without heart knowledge. Well, watch what he says. He said, if thou be the Christ, come down from the cross and save thyself and save us. Hmm. Listen to this one. This man's done nothing amiss. He done nothing. You and I deserve to go to hell. He's done nothing. What's wrong with you? You see the difference? Now this is still insane. He's got head knowledge. You know what his head knowledge is? Think about this. Why, why should this guy be able to go to heaven? He's a murderer. One's a murderer and one's a thief. Why, why would God let him go to heaven? I wrote down a few things. They begin to form an opinion and they begin to reason in themselves about why they should be saved. The head reasons, but the heart doesn't. The head tries to figure everything out about what it's going to do, but the heart doesn't. Well, it all came down to it, and I want, you to show, I want you to see what happens. This one here dies with his head knowledge. He dies with his head knowledge. And God's, God's given all of us uh, the privilege to hear about his son. It does start with head knowledge. His faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're not going to get saved if you don't hear the Bible. But it's not head knowledge that saves you. It's not your opinion about... I mean, if you were to ask most Americans, I didn't say all Americans, but a lot of American people that are... Let's say the son that's never been saved, they're not going to tell you that they don't believe... There's ever, a lot of people believe in God. You know what the scripture says about that? The devil believes and trembles. The devil believes. Does that mean just because he believes in God that... God's going to just change his mind and he's going to let the devil come on in heaven and he's going to just, hell's going to be all heaven. He believes. What does it mean? God blesses us all with a head knowledge. Let me tell you something. You woke up this morning and somewhere along the line there was knowledge of God in your brain. You can't drive down the road and look at the clouds and Look at the way things are without seeing that there's a God. In America and the world the other day, God put his fingerprint on national television for it to go all around the world. So head knowledge won't get you there. But you can't get there without it. Head knowledge won't get you to heaven. <laughs> but you can't get there without it. Isn't that something? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Here's a man on this side of the, of the Lord Jesus, a murderer who has a head filled with knowledge about Christ. He knows who Jesus is, and he looks at him. Watch what he says. If thou be the Christ, come down from the cross and save us and ourselves. he got a lot of head knowledge. Watch it. This guy over here looks over here and he rebukes this guy. Dost not thou fear God? You're on your deathbed. And with the knowledge you have in your head, you're mocking the Lamb of God. Dost not thou fear God? We deserve, here it is, watch it, watch it. Listen, don't miss it. We deserve to die. He's done nothing amiss. He had done nothing. And he's dying for you and for me. 
You got a lot of head knowledge, but you ain't got no heart knowledge. And here's what happens. In the last moment of this man's life, I personally believe, he went from head knowledge to heart knowledge. It's one thing to say we know God. Listen to me. It's another to confide in Christ. It's a total different ballgame to put your entire life, your ever being, and trust Christ with all of your heart. There's a multitude of people today that are sitting in churches, unfortunately filled churches, or to churches that are full. It's unfortunate subject. It's the truth. Churches are filled. And they've been bombarded and saturated with head knowledge, but they have never given their life to Christ. Now watch what I'm saying and I'm finished. If you have a copy of the scriptures, you're welcome to look and see and and trace me and track me. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10. You in your mind in Romans 10. Here's this thief on the cross. He's got all this head knowledge. He can't do nothing with his hands, can he? He can't go out here and do good work to, to receive salvation. His hands are nailed to the cross. He can't walk a straight line, can he? Look, he can't put his alcohol down. He can't stop his bad habits. (laughs) Ain't nothing to do. But there's two things that are still available for him to use. One is his heart, and the other is his tongue. You with me? If thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead. Listen to the promise. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Watch it. You ready? Here's a heart knowledge. Lord, when thou enterest into thy kingdom, remember me. He's confiding. He's placing all his faith, all his trust. Because he knows in his heart that the crucified Christ and the resurrected Christ is the only way. He's had a lot of head knowledge. Now he's got heart knowledge. You know what Jesus said to him today? Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come unto me. Call unto me, and I will show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Heart knowledge. Heart knowledge. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope or joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. Then the Savior came along and he showed me I was wrong and he placed me on the winning side. Well, I'm on the winning side. No more out in sin. I'm on the winning side. No more to drift out in sin. Why? Because of a heart knowledge, a confiding faith in the resurrected Christ, in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. I knew about him here, but I experienced him here. I experienced him here. Come a time that God dealt with my heart. And it went from knowing about God to firsthand knowing God. And may I stand today and tell you the greatest decision I ever made was to place my faith and trust in the crucified Christ. 
who loved me and gave himself for me. And once I placed my heart knowledge in the Lord Jesus and confided in him, you know what he did? He saved me. He saved me. Now you talking about, I, I like Irish spring soap. Oh, it's an eye opener. I put it all in my hair and my ears and just get I just feel clean and come out of there. The other night, my wife, she, uh, she, had, she had got some kind of new detergent that, that she used to clean our bed clothes with. And I asked her, I said, boy, this smells good. What is this? I said, it's got a clean smell to it. You know what Jesus did? He washed my sin away with his blood. He cleaned me up and established my going. I'm telling you, I got saved and I got right with God. God changed me. Now look, I tell you, I still got a lot of change. He's still working on me. But may I tell you, the first thing that went out of my life was old filthy mouth. I'm telling you, God took my filthy language in a second. He did. He did. I wish he'd take trumps. He did. He took my filthy mouth. I, I I didn't, I cursed the Lord. Now I'm praising him. Isn't that something? That's God. Never was a real heavy drinker, but when I did, I abused it. God took that stuff out of my life. He took narcotics out of my life. Why? Oh, back then I had a head knowledge. I wouldn't argue with you. I'd tell you there was a God. I'd tell you there was a God. I'd tell you I believed in him. I, I believe. Hey, we had a family Bible. My mama gave me a family Bible, Brother Mark. I kept it in my house. I've still got it somewhere. Big old, big old giant Bible. I believed in the Bible. I had a head knowledge. I believed in it. I, hey, I wasn't going I didn't like it when people took the Lord's name in vain. I never, I, I didn't say that a lot of times, even when I was lost. But I didn't, I didn't appreciate it. But I was still on my way to hell. It didn't change the fact that just, 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 oh, just because I believe that God was what he was saying, I'm going to heaven. Man, you better get that out of your mentality. The head reasons. The heart doesn't. With the heart, confession is made unto salvation. Watch it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Man, believe it, the heart. Hey, look, we got a multitude of people walking around with a head knowledge. These people I'm thinking of can take you, they could, they could probably give you a Bible verse. But may I say this, their life has never changed. You're going to sit and tell me that the God of heaven who shed divine blood, that you're okay and he hadn't changed your life. You're lying to me and you're lying to yourself. Listen to the scripture. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God changes everyone he touches. He changes. He took me. I was a nothing. Oh, I were I always worked. Didn't really love my family though, because I was more cared about myself with all my all, everything I had going on, illegal and, and wicked. And when God saved me, nobody had to tell me to get rid of none of it. None of it. I got up, I knew it was wrong. I went back, gave that back to this guy, lost friends all over this life. There ain't none of most of the ones that I lost, this is the truth, they're dead or they're in the penitentiary. Now that's, that's where was I going? They're dead or they're in the penitentiary. Now I've got one or two that I still talk to today that I've known that long. And, and, but they've, they've, they've changed their life though. They've, they've done some stuff. I don't mean they're right with God, but they, they made some they, they, let me just say this they obeyed the word of God without getting saved and God's blessed them anyhow God's prolonged their life he'd give them longevity of life I don't understand why a 
a person who already has heart knowledge, head knowledge would not want heart knowledge. Stand with me if you would before we dismiss. We've got just a minute or two. While well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. I want to ask you a question. I don't want nobody eyes open, no hands raising, no nobody move. This is personal. This is personal, private time with God and you. I want to ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself this question this morning. Right now, if I was to die, do I know, do I know, do I know, do I know where I'd go? And friend, if you don't know you're die, if you don't know that you'd go to go to heaven, friend, you don't have any heart knowledge. Because the first thing the Holy Spirit of God does, the first thing Jesus does when he saves a person, he assures them of their salvation. He makes them aware that they're a child of the living God. Matter of fact, you're stamped with the mark of the Savior when you're saved. If you're watching me online, you've never been saved, I'm pleading with you. Call out to the Lord. Preacher, what do I got to be saved? What do I got to do to be saved? Well, first of all, you've got to have some head knowledge. You've got to know that there's a, there's a God. There's a hell. There's a, he, there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And, and, and you've got to know you're a sinner. What do you mean I'm a sinner? You're wrong. Nobody has to teach you how to cuss. Nobody has to teach you how to do wrong. Nobody has to teach you how to get mad. It all comes naturally. You're a sinner. Sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. And your problem is just like leprosy. you got, you got a sin problem. And guess what? Nobody can cure sin but God. And if you've never been forgiven of your sin, if you've never invited Christ into your heart, heart knowledge, friend, you're on a place to, where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. And may I say this, you don't have to go there. You do not have to go there. Come to Christ before it's too late. We're going to have a verse of get, get us something, Brother Marty. And as he plays this, I'll give you just a moment or so. Maybe you need to move. And if not, we'll go out of here and go to the house. But you ought to weigh this heavy today. If you're watching me online and you have no heart knowledge, why don't you, why don't you make a decision right now in your heart if you're watching me online? Get on your face. Turn from your sins. And invite Christ into your heart before it's too late. Before it's too late. Lord, I believe I'm a sinner. If I was to die, I'd go to hell. But I'm asking you, give me the power to turn from my sin. Come into my heart and life and save me. In Jesus' name. And that's what you need to do. You need to take care of that. I trust if that was your, your need, salvation today, you've made a confiding faith. You, 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 you know what a confiding faith is now. Placing your trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of God's Son. In Him, in Christ. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? It's been good to be in God's house. Let's be dismissed in the word of prayer. Father, thank you this day for your kindness and your goodness. Thank you for the, the death, burial, and resurrection of thy darling son. Thank you for the grace that was shed upon this world, upon America. Thank you for the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. I pray you'd bless our time together. Bless the meal. Thank you for those that prepared it, Lord. Help us to grow in number. Help us to be obedient. We'll love you for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. You're dismissed.